Let's introduce to the people that know something there because mm. the way our social media right now is literally tearing down. Um, so you can start from Mr. Tracy <laughs> first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, um, Taiko and Tracy. Mm -hmm. I mean, most people know. Yeah. People know. All right. And I'm Rashid Doya in the building. Uh, Rashid Doya and Mr. Hansel. Hands apartment. Hands apartment. Uh, all right. So why Martin is starting out that. All right. So basically, um, if anybody knows me knows that you know i'm a track and field fan right and i think that our athletes don't get enough attention or enough praises and you know i do think that outside of our olympic or world championship season i think that you know our athletes supposed to be praised and and they deserve all the accolades and everything that they've achieved you know because of the hard work and sacrifices so for, for this interview basically i just want to get to know you guys a bit more you know the sacrifices the grit um some of the things that you have to endure and all of that so i don't know who wants to start first i just want a little background of how you get started i don't know if rashid wants to start first <laughs> all right then I get, you know, <laughs> yeah uh, i will definitely start first um i'm from a very humble um community in port mara st mary mm -hmm. um, and that's where i get the love for track and field mm -hmm. and then i eventually moved to Kingston when I was 12 um, get a scholarship to the, the wonderful Camperdown High School uh, Big Miss Cook I'm not really um, so sure about the wonderful part but yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no 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 the Jamaica College yes uh, yeah man yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but, like a KC man no <laughs> never 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 but go on yeah yeah <laughs> but from there um it was basically just a stepping stone for me um from Camperdown mm -hmm. and then I I moved to um, GC Foster College, yes. where I was nurtured by Maurice Wilson, mm -hmm. um, and then from there it was history. After um, numerous uh, um, qualifications, um, yes. different different um, teams from the small teams coming up from World Junior mm -hmm. to the Olympic Games, finally um, three World Championship and World Student Games. Actually, me and Parchment make a couple of um, World Student Games, yeah. and I am one of the the person that was there for the first time to see with their own eye to see him run the first sub 14 second 13 8 8 how long ago was that about from 2009 like 2010 2010, 2010. Yeah, yeah. I remember because we were actually roommates <laughs> yeah. yeah we were actually roommates so it, it's it's actually um humble journey mm -hmm. and, a, and a great one okay all right um so mr doyle I I'm going to get into you know your journey a little bit um in the interview because i know that you were plagued by injuries and and a bag of things so yeah. we'll get into that um mr tracy you know um how did this get started how did all this track and feel madness got started uh well for me um the madness didn't yeah. start until i went to garvey masio mm -hmm. um i've always been involved in track and field competing from primary school days but that was most mostly you know sports day a man would say oh, I'm faster than you and yeah, yeah, yeah. doesn't even prove a man wrong yeah I wasn't the fastest but <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah um you know I did I, I did it up to I did all of that up to um you know ninth grade mm -hmm. when um a track and field coach had came to me at the time I was playing a football match so he came to me after the match and he said you know to stop waste time mm. and play a ball nobody no go nowhere in a ball in a Jamaica and Actual the factor. small percentage of footballers who really make it out you know you right. might not be in that percentage so you know I, I did listen I really never took it serious I was still at Bustamante at the time mm -hmm. I mean I didn't really start taking it serious until you know foreign come into play yeah. you, know, you start get the opportunity to travel and all that and then you know yeah, mine really started when I went to Gavi Masia because that coach was like really more. It was stern. monumental in your journey. Yeah. Him, I love that. And um, to our now 110 meter hurdle Olympic champion, Mr. Parchment. Um, I know how your journey starts, and there's a part of your journey when you transfer schools to that school. Eh? Yeah. If you can lift out that school, eh, out of your story. But you can just tell us, you know, how you got started. Um, I, I know you came from humble background um, in St. Thomas. Um, Thomas. Thomas, yeah. Oh, Thomas. Oh, Thomas. Oh, Thomas. Was he there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, how was it though? How was it growing up in St. Thomas? Um, the journey, because I know that, you know, it's very rural, um, you know, especially back then. 
um how was that journey and the transition now to come into kingston and uh, and unfortunately going go to that high school but you know right how was the journey though i, I would say an awesome journey yeah you know, there's there's this place we call banking mm -hmm. in Cashybush where mm. we used to line up and race. Mm. I don't know how long. Let me see if we can estimate it. That's probably by about 150 or 200 meters worth of land space, mm. and we used to line up and race. Mm. And I feel like we had the fastest thing. Yeah, you know what I mean. At least in my age group, because we were racing with some of the bigger boys, and we couldn't catch them yeah. on Monday. Um, we, I don't know if we probably don't know Dwight Webley. Um, yes, I know the way we Yeah, man. So, yes. and he went to KC as well. Of went to Mark the high school as well. <laughs> yeah, Great man. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, he was always a part of the races. And um, but I really got into track and field after I watched a sports day in second form. Mm. And I saw, I don't know if you know, Wilbert Walker he used to dominate mm. champs. From uh, he used to did, he did the triple jump. Mm. He did a lot of events. But I watched them in a 100 meter race at a sports day mm -hmm. in Marbe High School and that sports day was like a champs mm -hmm. because the whole community was at the school <laughs> yeah i watched the race day yeah you know what i mean and me i say but me first why why am i not lining up with the two mm -hmm. you know what i mean so the, the following year we say oh me i join the track team mm -hmm. and we do a little race a little run off mm -hmm. Um, never too fast though, but <laughs> <laughs> still not too fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, them, them line me up for race against some man where I do like triple jump and long jump and them people yeah. not too fast. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we eventually get to join the team and make some moves. Um, before leaving Mark Bay School, I made the World Youth Games. Okay. Uh, went to KC. Mm. Unfortunately, I got an injury, but I still made a got a medal at champs. Mm. That was awesome. Uh, came to UA, met Mr. Coleman, mm -hmm. and it's just big things from there. Let me ask though, because all three persons, um, except Rashid, all you and Mr. Tracy, um, you guys went to. I would say a rural school or kind of like low key school. It's right? a country school. Right, country right. School. Yeah. Well, country <laughs> school. Um, do you think that champs make sense, like as a young youth coming up, like to see now that you guys are Olympians and, you know, you weren't dominating, dominating champs like some of the toned school youth them? Do you think that, you know, champs is that important or that integral in your career path? I. I think that champs is very important. Yes. Extremely important. The, the the part that I think that really don't make no sense is that most of our golden athletes mm. and top athletes are from country schools. Mm. And there is no facilities. There's no proper facilities for the country schools up to today. Mm. When you look at it, all the proper facilities are in Kingston. Yeah. And then when you look at the medals, mm -hmm all of them come from country that is true so um it is, is it true. is very much wrong yeah to or maybe that's just how god wanted you know mm. we struggle more so we end up getting more but at the end of the day i think there should be more for these country schools so that is the only thing i don't see don't what don't make no sense i mean but champs is very it's very important you 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 touch on a good point right um i do believe that you know like country schools need more development but yeah you know how jamaica stay already kingston people them get all the preference and all the things then from day one from day one um hansel you got a medal in high school was that while attending that school in kingston or, or attending <laughs> the country school <laughs> i don't want to call the name champs yeah. yata, which champs yata, but eastern champs because i have a whole okay eastern champs medal. so there's eastern champs yeah yeah and you got medals from st thomas yes from morant pint or morant Bay. Bay, okay nice. love that so you got medals from the eastern champs other school here in kingston when i went to kingston college <laughs> 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 yeah 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 man i got a, a medal um in the hip i, I didn't do the hurdles because so you ran what at um 10 events seven events, seven events. Yeah, man. Why am I don't know? Oh, well, for something that still is, you know. So you did high, um, high jump. High jump. You did long jump. Long jump hurdles. One ten hurdles. Yeah. Two hundred shot. Shot put. Discuss. Okay. Uh, one more, javelin. 
think it was yeah 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 yeah, yeah. wow um uh, mr doyer so i'm um, going to camperdown high school which you say a top school skills, spring but, fracture them did uh, say back in the days. but then yeah. yeah um how important you were to your school um sprinting team you well, got medals at champs and them something there? Well, yeah I, I actually made almost every finals yeah. from class one i'm a, I, I i actually did hurdles also in yeah. class two yeah, yeah. um yeah. i i actually made the finals i came fifth in the hurdle mm. um class two um class one i made the 100 um and one of the, the 200 meter um but i did not actually finish in the medal position you know why because them time the jc did a dominate champs i understand i understand listen. no i get it we get it it was in the finals yes but i didn't think the, the medal either you wonder eh? yeah, you wonder went to high winston, school around winston, the same winston, time winston barnes was in the winston final. barnes was the yeah. star but athlete at JC, have, yeah. in, in my era you have the young one blake you have the rama the rose you have the nickel ashman oh, yeah, you, you, yeah. you, yeah. 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 you have the you have the warren weir yeah man yeah man yeah, my, yeah. My, yeah. my era of track and field was very hard Definitely, 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 hard. definitely. I can't agree. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's Tracy, is it? Yeah. I thought those records went in my time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, <laughs> I, I can't totally agree. Um. But, so then each person spoke about record went in your time. Yeah. Yeah, but but the the, the crew, um, the, the effort of everyone was. Remember, in I had the Minzy, the Murphy, the Skeen, the Delano uh adam cummins all, remember all, all of those people yes but, <laughs> but look at this look at my era almost everybody from yes made jamaica team definitely and olympians so far, yes olympic definitely definitely we're come on time. Time. <laughs> I'm I'm i mean like, yeah a lot of them didn't roll over but yes. i mean yeah <laughs> was there all right um so transitioning from high school right i want to know how hard it is to be a high schooler to go pro because i think that is one of our issues here currently for the past couple of, of years you know the star athletes at champs they don't really transition well to pro why do you think so anybody because really and truly i always want to know i don't really it's literally like a 10 percent of man that used to burn up champs and all these things transition well it really happens why uh, is I, it an overwork at high school level and them just burn out I don't I mean I don't think so. I would think it mainly has to do with um proper management. Okay. And a lot of a lot of high school athletes they they bring the high school attitude over to the senior <laughs> level. Mm -hmm. And that definitely won't work. <laughs> so well, I, I, I just well, think well. it have to do with stuff like that. Mm. I'm I'm not gonna say that um basically it shouldn't um come over to be professional mm -hmm. um because we have tremendous high school athletes um but i think that the opportunity these high school guys get at a tender age and and not proper management as taekwondo said that and coming over to the scene with all of those um collective effort from mm -hmm. all different um corporate um companies and overseas company with so so much things at their feet i think they, they take it for granted mm -hmm. and after a while um they, when they're not performing up the standard when they're becoming when they are uh professional at least mm. um they they actually lose focus so i, I think that i think that they, is it yeah i think they lose focus i think that is it well, definitely everything come back to to mismanagement yeah because you know if you don't have the proper guidance how are you going to know how to do things properly so who is responsible to be guiding these youngsters is it the youngsters themselves is it their parents is it the coaches because really and truly something is definitely wrong it's a combination it, okay. of everybody still yeah okay. it's, it's a definitely a combination okay <laughs> is it that these youngsters are just not humble no most of them are humble definitely most of them are humble you think so yes i, I think so if you know each athlete personality probably you see them out of their circle yeah you think they're they're hype and stuff like, like that but most of them are <laughs> humble if you are get close to them if you look outside they look a very um high patient yeah like that but once you but mr humble doing a like in terms of when you're a star athlete from high school and you are run five six events and you're doing very well and when you know a transition now okay, and you reach to a coach and a coach like i tell you say yo here i go on no xyz someone just don't want to listen and i think maybe that is the issue let me know all right i, I was saying um if 
You're not Umbro. Chucks will definitely Umbro. <laughs> definitely. True. Yeah. Sure, that's yeah. that's like, like, that's ah! Definitely. True. Yeah. You're, you're, you're about no money for Tampi. Yeah. Chuck will Umbro definitely. Yeah. Um. So I kind of want to get into your first time that you've made a senior team. Uh, what was that experience like? Because I mean, anybody can mash up champs as a youngster, but the first time that you've made a senior <laughs> team, can you recall? Yes, I can definitely recall. Yeah. Um, making a, what a was that? It, it was like 2009. Um, I, I ran out of trials, but I didn't make um, the, I didn't make the finals. I think I made mm -hmm. the semifinals, but all, numerous teams were were going out, like they, probably the world championship and mm -hmm. a couple of that. So there was some minor teams leave leave back, like the CAC teams, and I mm -hmm. was asking my teammate make a call for me please make a call for me to find out if yeah. we can scrape on one of these smart things <laughs> <laughs> and i actually made it for the relay yeah yeah i, I made it for the relay and I, I think it came second or third but i get a medal and yeah the, the, the main objective was running for my country and getting some gears jamaica gears jamaica gears jamaica and gears was golden back then yeah, yeah. you see yeah. a man come out even a trap meet and you see my running and yeah. jamaica gears yeah i say yo yeah one of them tights there <laughs> <laughs> and for you how uh, was the first team you made my first team senior team yes first senior senior team uh very bad experience for me mm -hmm. as almost like just this olympics mm. so it was in 2015 uh the world championship in beijing yes i did not make the um the individual event mm -hmm. but i made a four by one yes and I had broke my ankle mm. um, 15 minutes before the race. That was me and you doing money exchange. Yeah. <laughs> really? It was me and him doing money exchange. So 15 minutes before the race? Yeah. You know the warm up? 30 minutes in the yes. warm up. Wow. I, I have the same one that's here right now. <laughs> wow. He wow. Was, he was the one bringing the money. Yeah. yeah. In the warm up. Jesus. You're wanting with Chucks to do. Chucks to go humbly. So no joke. Yep, so. um, Hansel, um, can you recall the first senior team that you've made? Uh, first senior team, I think that was a 2010, could have been CAC, one of them CAC yeah, yeah, games. Yeah. There. Yeah, yeah, but first major team, I was on the Commonwealth Games team mm -hmm. 2010. Okay, when you know, all the big athletes, them, them not really want to go. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. And that plus, true. it was like way down in the year, like yeah. October or something like that. Mm. So, everybody depend on them half season now. Yeah. And, the small artists and get a chance to touch out and thing and mm. actually run well mm. um get a pr i think it probably was the first time or maybe the second time i was running 13 seconds mm. no, maybe the second time the second time second first time, time was the game that we went on that's it costa rica cac game costa rica Puerto man. Rico, Puerto Rico. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, no yeah. more about you. That was just let us say. The, the man, no more. That answer. That him say. 13 38. 13 Answer that you remember. <laughs> um, athletes always have injuries, right? Um, unfortunately. Um, how do you handle that mentally, though? Because I know that especially men male athletes they don't speak much about mental health and how important it is to, to have faith because me can't imagine if i was like taekwondo now where I broke my ankle in 2015 oh man i just ball what did i forget left me a foreign like me not ask christ well, let's see like me now me and i ball in kind of person, yeah, well wait right? sorry <laughs> me and the man we are gonna come and talk to the talk to everybody and yeah say, listen you have to look forward mm -hmm. because you know make no sense a day as i do look on this yeah that can't help you Mm -hmm. No matter where you ball, that now fix this problem. That is true. So, might as well take the time and think about how I'm going to solve this. Mm -hmm. How I'm going to move forward. What kind of steps we need to take. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, injuries come from like lack of injuries come from everywhere. Injuries come from everywhere. Trust me. Everywhere. Everywhere. Anywhere. Well, um, Taekwondo, mm -hmm. this year, um, 2021. I never want for going at it so quick, but 2021 happened. You became the national champion in the 100 meters. Mm -hmm. um, and then a little before you come out now for run, we hear you say, bum, you got an injury. Uh, how was that? How did you take that though? Like mentally, how did you deal with that? Uh, you can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> No, because I can't you imagine know, it. Yeah. I put it this way, my eyes were swollen for two days. Yeah. 
that's that's how much crying that was going on yeah i mean even after the fact when ansel and julian came and you know talked me out of all of the the emotions mm-hmm. in the moment i still went to the bathroom i'm telling them i go show you can't tell how long i go show yeah and I was still in there and because there was a seat because the bathroom was basically built for a disabled person. Yeah. So there was like a seat inside mm. and I was still in there crying for, mm. for the most part. I mean, eventually uh, I came out. Um, the the only thing that really rings and got through my mind like for the most part is like why? Why no? Because mm. the thing is, I've never had an injury like that before. Mm. Never. It's what exactly like, happened to you? I uh, had a cramp in mm. my hamstring. So I basically strained a tendon mm. in the hamstring. Never had those issues before. Mm. Never. It's normally a, a, a joint issue or ligament. So, never those type of problems. Mm. And to see, to see, I get a, a hamstring strain and one of the days when I was feeling the best in my life mm. it, it, it was a lot and do you feel like you let down your country and yourself and your family members mm. I felt I felt like I let down the people closest to me yeah. people that people that supported me the most yeah to say to, to ask if I felt as if I let down my country is a is a big ask because mm. a lot of people a, a, a lot of people aren't with you until you win. I'm so good so, at that. Man. <laughs> I'm so, so good at that man. So, 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 for me, man. so for me, I can say personally, I just <laughs> felt like I I I let down myself right. and the person that I know for a fact that I were sitting down waiting to see me go out on the track and didn't actually get to see that. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, we are, we are, we are, we're proud, regardless of the fact. I know that you know you've had some years of 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 trials and and you know all of that, and I think that you know you put your heart out on the track this year, and to see you come back as a national champion, as we could have seen your celebratory um, gestures and everything, you know that you really wanted it. But you know, um, all the best, and there's always next year. You know, as I answer say. You have to just think about moving forward. Uh, yeah. Rashid, yeah. you were now the only man, correct me if I'm wrong, who made the um, a sprint final. Sprint final. Yes. 100-200. 100-200, yes. Yeah. Um, that feeling, you've tried that many, many times. Uh, I know that's yeah, a fact. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah man. You know yeah, man. I've got my message of times yeah, and yeah, I said, bro, yeah, time. man. Um, did you feel like this year would have been like your year? Like you would have meddled? Well, it could be. Um, yeah. You were talking to Taekwondo Tra- 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 about um, the, the injuries and stuff like that. Um, I never like to talk about my injuries um, because I believe that um, everybody out there actually doing track and field have a sad story. Yeah. And, I, and, uh, and it's going through a lot of pains and a lot of injuries. Yeah. So I believe um, mm-hmm. um, everyone is going through the same or even worse. Um, mm-hmm. My teammate, Demish um, Gay, um, fracture is it his uncle and it was in the pool for about a couple months well about a month before Charles mm. he came out of the pool so I think um, I'm basically trying to explain what I'm going through to actually the world I don't think um, I should do that I just should get up and try to work hard and come back on my feet but for love that but I mean cut you just one second because we're going to go to the break before we go to the break though I just want you to touch on the COVID situation after we come back <laughs> and the armstring problems and everything yeah mama know the file man so I forgot wow. about it you understand <laughs> alright guys this is Boy Things After Dark right here on Newstalk 93 FM when to go on a commercial break and we'll be right back come back to Boy Things After Dark right here on Newstalk 93 FM we're here up until 11pm and we have our Olympians here we have Taekwondo Tracy our 100 meter national champion we have our 200 meter national champion uh, Mr. Mr. Dwyer, and we also have hands up parchment or 110 meter hurdles Olympic gold medalist. Um, so, Mr. Dwyer, back to you now. I know that you don't like to talk about your struggles and, and all of that, but I mean, it comes with the game. Um, I heard that you contracted uh, COVID ne- uh, last year. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, um, and you also had three armstring uh, injuries. Yes. 
consecutively. Yo, your source is really good. I don't know where. <laughs> it's my job. I'm a job, brother. Yeah, Anybody tell about that show, you can't tell you. I'm in a business. <laughs> well, I have my sources. Wow. <laughs> um, how did you manage, though, to want to train or lack thereof within the COVID season and, you know, to contracting COVID, which is a deadly, deadly virus, and then to have three back-to-back injuries? How did you manage to to come back and still um, become I'm the telling champion? You, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Um, I, I was I hurt my armstring at a trap meet in JC last year. Um, and then the Jamaica College, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say JC, please, please. So, the Jamaica please, College, yeah. Please, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then after that, I contracted some more injuries. Um. I went to a trap meet and um, I was running 21, going, going 200. Mm-hmm. I run numerous 21. <laughs> and I, I actually um, couldn't believe, but I was really happy that I was running. Mm-hmm. And close to the to the games, I contracted um, the, the virus. Mm. How bad was it though? It, it was really bad. It I was, was really bad? For about two weeks. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought it was just a, a common flu until my coach, my coach um, told me that the the do a test and it was actually the virus and i was training with the virus mm. but i was trained by myself you never know yeah so i was i, I thought that i have the flu so my coach precaution told me that said yeah. okay then you need to train by yourself so uh, my assistant coach was training me in the afternoon or in the late nights but when i was running the the weakness was getting horrible on me i mm. couldn't i couldn't breathe so Actually, could have um, hurt myself. Yeah. Actually, could have hurt myself, and, and basically close to the trials, um, I wasn't that well. I was running twenty one, as I said before, mm-hmm. and I was very motivated, but I was very worried at the same time. Yeah. And about a week before the trials, I ran twenty point five. Mm-hmm. I said, "Wow, okay, them do I, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Say you, once you run twenty point five, you know, say you, yeah, you, get back to yeah, it, get man. Back to it. Yeah. Um, but even at the, the Olympic Games. Everybody, no, no one know know this, but my coach. I was sick for about a week. Mm. At the Olympic game, I, I haven't trained um for about a week and other. And you run your season best in the semifinals. Yes, commendable. Yeah, yeah I, was at, I was at training with my teammate. So let me ask you a question now, though, right? So when you go through all of these things last year, leading up to this year, and then you went to the Olympics, but actually you became the two hundred meter um, national champion, and then you went to the Olympic games and you ran up. A season best in the semis um what was going through your mind at that time like did you feel like yeah man like this is it like yeah, yeah, yeah. i forget a medal in the final i eat this um, or you were just hopeful and just thankful that you were there i was very very emotional um, yeah. after i'm um, finding out that i made the finals mm-hmm. um even if i didn't get a medal i was so happy yeah that i made the finals um trying over the years to actually make um uh, international finals um, you know what I, I've been yes, through. Yes, definitely. So it was really overwhelmed. Mm. So um, I was aiming definitely for a medal because once you're in the finals, you any, have a any chance. Can any can play. Can play you definitely. have a chance to, to make the finals. So I went out there with the mindset to, to get a medal. Unfortunately, I didn't get a medal, but I'm very grateful with my performance. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, Your personal best of 19.80. Do you think that you can go back to that shape? Most definitely. Yeah. Um, Open this year. I haven't finished races yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually going to lead for for um, pre fante, um, probably Diamond League soon, and then probably um, venture into Europe mm-hmm. and see if I can actually get back close to that. So most definitely. I love that, um, Mr. Parchment. Uh, you were the first Jamaican male to get an Olympic medal in the hurdles, and that was what 2012. Yeah. You got a bronze, yes? Mm-hmm. Um, walk us through that moment. Um, how did you feel though? Because I mean, our track and field team has been doing well, you know, over the years. F- so for you to actually make history years after so many greats have done that event, um, to literally be the first meal to get a medal, um, how was that feeling? Why? Well, well nervous, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, well yeah. nervous in the finals. I was cool as a cucumber in yeah. the semis. I was running against one of my role models, mm-hmm. Robles. And, um, you know, I was excited to race against him because I was saying, all right, let me see if we can circle him today. Mm. <laughs> 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 you know I mean? Yeah. I'm going to close him down 
um, towards the last two hurdles, and I think he kind of realized I was catching up and mm. putting a little extra gear to make sure him, him, yeah. him, him win the semis. You know what I mean? And I, I could have seen that and kind of smile and say, all right, problems in my finals now. Finals come out. I don't know if you guys realize, but I was trying to straighten my gear, my, my body suit. Yeah. Because <laughs> it kind of twists up so when I put it on. Yeah. So I try to straighten it and all when him say, get on your mouth, it's still not straightening. Yeah. Yeah, man, but Nerves. it was an awesome feeling. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I, I did my best. I feel like I could have run faster, but you know. But then, was it the year after you got the silver medal in the World Championship? No, it wasn't until 2015. 2015 so was, World Championship, yeah. okay. And then you got a silver medal. So, three years span. Um, yes, there weren't any Olympic Games after that, or um, but still a three year span. Yeah. Um, what happened throughout that three years? Like, Injuries span top of injuries. Injuries span top of injuries. <laughs> Them just pile up yeah. each other. But I feel like we at least sometimes we do, we do some things to make injuries come on and, and stay on. Mm. Um, there are things that we're supposed to do mm. and there are things that we're not supposed like to do. Like what? Give us one thing that you're not supposed to do as an athlete that can cause an injury. Um, remember, some of the know, some of them So yeah. Well, sometimes not enough rest. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have too much extracurricular activities mm. and that kind of take away from like sex. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, no. Here are my ask because I can remember when we used to go to the Jamaica College, yes? Rumors. And when the man them. <laughs> rumors, rumors. When the man them used to have camp for like champs, right? Yeah. I can remember saying, no, for the man them used to say, yo, coach, I tell them, say, yo, them can't have sex down with them something. So I don't know if Con that can hinder you. Control methods. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Noted. Control Keep methods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, so then 2015 happened and you got a silver medal. Um, that's a step closer now to the gold. Um, how were you feeling back then? Tw 2015 was what, six years ago? Yeah, so what was that feeling like? Yes. Don't it time of right? Oh, <laughs> do you remember believe him? 2015 was, um, how can I put it? It was one of them injury years mm. where the first half of the season. Well, not for the first half. Let, I had a solid background. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I got in the strength work, I got in the mileage, all of those things. And then, boom, injury came, mm -hmm. came on and took over. I didn't have one solid race. I think I was running like, must say 13, 40 something. Mm -hmm. And I might have had a 13, three at one point. I don't remember exactly. And then, boom, trials come. 13, one. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I ran like 13-0 in the in the finals. Mm -hmm. Omar won one um that year. <clears throat> After that I had no more races before the before the World Championship. World Championship, yeah. But I went to Germany mm -hmm. and I got to saw uh, to see um Dr. Muller. Mm -hmm. Got some solid treatment, solid physio, all the all the things that I needed to give. And I used the time to, to really zero in on, on, on you know, my technique and, and everything that I needed to do. And I was confident, mm -hmm. you know, because that's one thing I always try to do is to keep um, that tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. you know, not, not worrying about the injuries, not worrying about what anybody has to say. Right. You know, it's just about getting to that goal. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like if it was a setup where, well, I, did, I didn't use my resources wisely. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I think I had a half hour roommate in 2015. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna chat to him about the start. Mm -hmm. Never did that. <laughs> like I did this year. Yeah. You know what I mean? I might, I might have won. I might have won that. Yeah. But it was a very good experience. Who won the gold medal that year? Uh, Shubenka. Okay. Um. So then, 2015 to 2021. Um. We've had. 2016 Rio Olympics, we've had 2017 World Championships, 2019 World Championships. What happened in between those six years? Like six years span, you know, what has been happening? Well, uh, holy for chaos. Man. Yeah. Holy chaos. Holy more injuries. Yeah. I just didn't get things in order. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? I were like you focused then? You think that you were that's focused? That's what I'm I, I don't feel like I was focused enough. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like my mind was in the right place. Yeah. I feel like I was very much distracted. And 
You know, I lift a lot of things past my bike. Like what? Can't get into too much detail. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then 2021 happened. I know that you've been battling some injuries this year. Um, I know, I think, if my memory serves me correctly, you, I think, ran two races um, before all the excitement. Uh, what are what exactly was going through your mind because i know that you had some yeah b bad 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 injuries um national championships came around a lot of people counted you out yes. but one thing i know and the parchment is going to to come through when it matters um did you think that you're going to make this team because i know omar had I think at that time, the fastest time for the year, it was between him and the American. They were kind of going back and forth, back and forth. Um, and I know that Levy was also having some great races. Brad Bill. Brad Bill. Oh, wow, Brad Bill. Yes. <laughs> How could I forget Brad Bill? Um, what exactly went through your mind leading up to the national trials? Like, did you think that you're going to make the team because you were battling those injuries? Well, as I say, I always, I'm always confident. Yeah. And I don't worry about anything. Mm -hmm. I come out to perform and give my best race. Mm -hmm. um, I know I wasn't in the best of shape yes. because of injuries that prevent me to do a lot of the preparation. But I was always focused on the goal and I came out to give my best race. Yeah. Um, I would have hoped for a faster time in the finals to you know more cement my place so that <laughs> nobody couldn't say okay came third yeah he came third okay and the discussion that was going around so for the persons who are listening and by the way we're still number one tuning on twitter so you know thank you guys so much for that um so for the persons who are not really check and feel fans or you know really that pay attention um omar mcleod who is the defending well the, the then the defending um, olympic champion uh he came eighth mm. yes and there was some one bag of excitement and some soup and salad and a bag of things that was happening and um there were a lot of discussions um as it relates to letting him run um and he should have been selected on the team in that moment no did you think that they were going to say yo here we go on no well africa sent omar and the third because clearly you came third so the only person that you could have taken off that team would have been the person that came third likewise in, in 2008 with Shelly and fraser um when and they wanted 2016 with and, tw and, and 2016 with Minzy and Bolt. um so hi so um what was going through your mind at that moment because me personally if that was me me not ask guys. Me that me, me that day me I yada say. Oh, they not take me off for the team, you know. Right? Um, did you think at any given moment that they would have removed you? I, w I wouldn't say I was worried. Um, I was concerned. Yes. Um, surrounding the circumstances, but I got from very good sources. Same that, here. That I would be all right. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that calmed down things for me. But of course, they, they were lobbying for for a change and all of that. But of course, all of them happy now, I, I suppose. Um, if you were in that predicament and if you were the rain, well, you are now, and a couple years down the line, something happens to you and you never make the team, um, would you still rally or fight for you to get a chance on that team, knowing? your strength and knowing how well you were doing that season because omar once again he had a fantastic season yeah. or you know he was having a fantastic season leading up to the trials True. um would have would it have been and i want to ask this question correctly would you have this in your mind to say hey put him on the team like i am the reigning olympic champion and i'm having a fantastic season and this man just come third and he's injured no really no i, 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 that that still, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't do that yeah I but that, that, that. everybody different yeah yeah all right so then leading up to the olympic games um and i think i made a couple of tweets about this when you won right and no even before you won um you know i brought up the fact of this was the same thing that happened with the veronica campbell brown the legendary veronica campbell brown in 2008 when she failed to make the team and you know shelly came third and you know persons were saying you know remove x and put this person on the team and so i made the tweets 
I think you guys were on the way to Tokyo and I said, it's funny how this discussion is, is going on when we saw this happen before in 2008 and this girl came to be a double Olympic gold medalist, right? Um, so I don't think that we should be having this conversation anymore. But I get, you know, where persons were coming from. Like you were saying, well, this is a sure medalist and this person is, is kind of unsure. Sure. Um, What's it not really sure for nobody? Uh, yeah, see there. Especially over the hurdles. Especially over hurdles. Um, but on your way to tokyo no you might have gotten some more treatment um did you know that you had that run in you did you know that you would have gotten that gold medal um what were going through your mind at that time well that was my plan all along yeah i wasn't training to go there and come second yes or not medal yeah you know what i mean and it was just a great opportunity that they put me with grant for all three rounds I was very surprised by that, you know by the way. When I saw the semi finals line up and I said, wait, me and Grant again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I said, who set up the mirror? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, all right, but it was blessing in disguise because I yeah. see him come out and trust me, when we come back at the room and me and Tracy and Julian and them boys are reason. I say, I want to see how the man get up. The man is almost as tall as me and him, when, me are, when me are look at Erdo and him, they are Erdo too. Yeah. I'm gonna say, oh, 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 let me do that. Yeah, we get, we get for just <laughs> sit know, down and, and, and analyze, and him, analyze him with each run. Yeah. And yeah. if you notice, in a heat, in a the first that the first round, yeah, him finish like three meters behind. Yeah. Second round, two. Yeah. That's how we needed to get. He that catch close. Yes, <laughs> so I mean, it's called study the race. Study the but race. I think what Grant had in mind, though, you know, is that he ran sub thirteen in a few mind is this gold medal. But now I got to analyze this, right? And yeah, when I know me already, I said that that gold medal would have been his. Cool? Mm -hmm. And I said that we would have gotten two medals in that race. Um, I placed you for a silver, and that was even before the semi final run. But after I said the semi final, I said, Yeah, man, boy, food get cooking on my night. This <laughs> because there's no way. Yeah, man, I said, Yeah, yeah. And so definitely, definitely is going to get this. But I think that a lot of persons counted you out for many years. True. Um, and it's not like you have not performed because again you gave us our first Olympic medal um, you gave us a silver medal in the world championships you know you've performed even when you're not at your best but a lot of people counted you out um, when you, you're now the Olympic champion um, do you kind of have like this mindset of well I'm not too one no for no I praise me no you know because when I never have no faith in me no at all because technically that's what I would have said <laughs> I must have tell you the truth. People me know me. Yeah. No, people know me you know, like me that bad you know. So me personally, I don't just be like, yo, I'm not even a one hour post me. Like, don't post me. <laughs> because <laughs> oh, no, the one I only did that jump up. Me love search people name and tweet, you know. So I'm good last like, search your tweet and say, but now you say man did I say, yeah. or oh, if you take me off of the team, I know yeah, come come. Because send the congratulations to you, mother. <laughs> yeah. Hi Cassie, how are you? Well, <laughs> people, Cassie is here, so I know it's my alphabet myself. So yeah, man. Yeah. Well, I try to keep the thing positive still. Mm. And what I do now is try to remind everybody that we need support for the money whenever we win as well. Yeah, yes. You know what I mean? So yes. I could, could share the support. Yeah. Because we're all there representing yeah. ourselves and, and the country. And, and also, regardless of the circumstances, anything is possible. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I'm sure any analyst out there <clears throat> would say the same thing about him. So they never see if he win. Yeah, definitely not. Mm -hmm. Isn't mm -hmm. it? Definitely so. not. And that's why you must write people's story for them you know, and allow people to write their own stories. And that is my mantra for this entire Olympic Games. You know, I've always said, because we've gotten a lot of surprise medals. Um, like my friend Megan Tapa, big up herself, Megan. Yep. You know, she was also a surprise medalist, and people write write fair story and write a little book. Mm -hmm. Um, how are you feeling now being the Olympic champion? I I really cannot imagine um all the excitement and the emotion of gratitude and and all that, but as it like sunk in fully that yo, I am the Olympic champion, like I I am the number one Olympic person, the number one hurdler right now. You're not thinking it though. No, no, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you touched on something that I wanted to talk about as well, um, and that is about supporting our male athletes. And I know that we're in a transition period. I know that we've been saying this for for the past couple of years, even when Bolt was still around. Mm -hmm. I know that we you know we've been saying that 
you know outside of bolt who else to have and xyz and i remember um i think it was a world championship that our only gold medal came from omar mcleod yeah right i mean you know, people were just saying yo you know at least them not the good um i've watched a couple of videos some couple of athletes and you know i you know i spoke to megan tapper and i know her story i know a lot of other athlete stories um do you think that we're a little bit harsh or is it or right to bash athletes or to want or expect better from them anybody can answer no at this point because so i think want, everybody right so yeah, yeah man i think everybody right here right now people <laughs> coming to know out for years <laughs> What you say about that? Because I just feel like uh, male athletes get a lot of bashing more than anybody else. So um, recently I saw this um, was this talk show, I think, sports talk show with this guy saying that Jamaica currently, the country that's on paper, has a 2.5 million population. Yes. The US has... 400 and something thousand mm -hmm. million 400 and something million yes million population uh, what a lot of jamaicans won't see is that whenever an american or a european hit the track mm -hmm. no matter how slow the jamaican is in the race they are looking out for that person mm. Fox. don't matter Fox. they're always looking out for that person Fox. and then to see how no matter who we are or how well we're doing these mm -hmm. people have us on a pedestal mm -hmm. win lose or draw true and then to see our own just while we buck with two once mm. to start chew away under the bus do you think that we're an ungrateful nation as people do you think that we don't appreciate our athletes i know that you're very honest uh, person, you're i think we have person. too much people that 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 have a voice too much people have too much internet and i'm out too much opinion my yeah, say. and and a lot of them a lot of them really need to to just to just shut up because as i said before yeah hansel do i over there can tell you there is little to know none of these people wherever wake up and come at the training ground come see i carry <laughs> some gatorade carry a bottle of water when we lay down on this i vomit and we leg them mash up come yeah. shake up with leg mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so for one of them i have an opinion on our lives i know we compete and all perform mm. me tell them this before i really don't care about whatever they want to say we know because we know them <laughs> never yeah. carry a bottle of water come yeah. to me when me are dead i vomit mm. or I try to hide from the last one when my coach i come find me yeah <laughs> none of them so but, people in jamaica really need to understand that as Anso said before, him not going to the finals to finish second. Yeah. None of us go out there and say, yo, we're going to come last. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you, exactly. Think, you think we get up every morning, go train with heart out for go out there and say, we want to come second? Mm. Or even third? But, no. But do you think that because there's this notion or this opinion going around that, you know, our Jamaican athletes are not um, hungry enough or determined enough? So when the athletes don't perform to their expectations um they're just like you see or because they're not cheering or because they're not putting them on yeah before you answer yeah. that though i'll go on and enter to break <laughs> i'm going to talk to you about something on your old uh, mvp camp before, uh, right after the break yeah man <laughs> yeah man you know, get to one i'm mr parchment i have some things to talk to you about too all right guys so this is boy things after that right here on news talk 93 <laughs> fm my name is karim boy things and we're gonna be right back after this break welcome back to boy things after dark right here on news talk 93 fm and we have the three olympians in the building um and mr tracy you were speaking about yeah. the um unsupportive people in jamaica that really don't make sense but them just always attack and you made a point after the break i'm um, doing the break that i've always said right um i've lived abroad for many many years and i've watched american media when chuck and phil are going all if them athletes don't even go to the second round they might find some way for big them up they might talk about whatever made them win 10 years ago yeah jamaican media i think the media is the reason why the citizens 
are so negative towards the athletes because the, the sports journalists them and the journalists them we go to school and get too much, much degree i don't know someone have too much degree you know that's the problem they are so negative right and you some of them bad man see there like for real some of like, them do want to turn athlete some of them probably do want to turn athlete i never work out yeah but i mean the the the, the, the media itself i want the main reason why yeah Jamaican people feel that feel the need for, for continue the bashing or, or for, for bash people because as we said before them have no right yeah um somebody said that is because we're spoiled as a nation and because you know we've done well um in prior years but not really said that because there were years when we only get all two three medals spoiled spoiled that's a very bad thing to say yeah because yeah, we've had a lot of success from one area in track and field Definitely. over the last couple of years. Literally one area. Maybe we have a little drizzle yeah. here and there, but it's mostly one area. So I can't say the country has been spoiled. The thing is, people don't understand that life, life is a cycle mm. in itself. Mm. And i don't think there is there has ever been a country who has always been winning and never lost that's true and people feel to understand said not everybody is you seeing both and not because trust me not even the great america never find a you see both and they won't find one for now and they they will never yeah so people feel, people feel to understand that there's ups and downs in everything definitely track and field as me him can tell you a youth in a bus sit down and catch a cramp behind a pool. Yeah. Sitting down in a bus. Those are some of the things that athletes go through. You're in your bed asleep and you, you catch a cramp and you, yeah. you make, yeah. a, you make yeah. a wrong move and you can't hurt yourself. Yeah. You can't train for days. Mm. Um, I'm going to go back to the training um, aspect of it. And I also want to ask Mr. Dwyer soon about the unsupportive Jamaicans. But Mr. Tracy, you've had some issues with um, your past club. Hmm. that you were um which one signed to most the, recent are the mvp club oh um yeah you know so we don't really have about interviews are doing you know so when we have the little interview them off ask you know, everything one time you understand sure um and it was apparently some financial situations and apparently you know people telling you where you know, what not to do and um how would i bring you know how am i getting this source of <laughs> <laughs> but telling already some source them on point to the, yeah so apparently you know um the specific person and mm-hmm. you know, i have this um notion of well if it's not my way then it's the highway yeah and um you're a very vocal person as we all would know um so that just didn't work out but what exactly happened because the financial situation is one but then also the coaching aspects um of it what exactly was the situation with that uh steven franz is a great coach definitely nobody can take that from him really great coach but he's a horrible person uh i can say that based off my experience with him one thing i really like about him is somewhat like myself he's going to tell you the truth yes <laughs> he's definitely going to tell you the truth um yeah, yeah. wow but how he treats people especially people that he doesn't have at a certain regard regard yes. is not good yes and you know when it came down to me and starting to come into this <coughs> professional world and then you know start running sometimes and you know there were certain things i needed to understand and he was basically upfront with me which i respect and said listen you don't need to know all of this stuff you yeah. just do what we say Merit. and keep it pushing and i was not about that life so then you left yeah um have you spoken to him since you've left that club never never Don't um that celebratory um or that victory celebration that you did at the national trials many would say that it was a kind of a a kind of a summer, I'm for say it like had, it had, it had nothing to do with mvp okay that had nothing to but do it had MVP. something to do with other things that had everything to do with where i was that I was I left MVP to a club in in a foreign in, in Florida. Yeah. All of that celebration had to do with that club. Okay. Um Mr. Doyle, so to yeah. the unsupportive Jamaicans, right? 
uh you know there are many people who are listening right now who would say that it's okay to critique athletes and it's okay to to want more or want better from our athletes um do you think the way they're going about doing so is that the right way well everybody basically have their own opinions yes um whether you, whether you win or lose um someone will uh, will definitely have something to say mm. um to be honest with myself i don't think the male athlete in jamaica is doing up to par including myself okay and why is that no i'm, I'm basically saying like not because i run 20.1 mm -hmm. not because i want to run 20, um, 10 flat um it's it's not up to par um, so I, is the up to par because of lack of training is the up to par because of lack of talent is it up, is it up to par because of a lack of different circumstances yeah, different, yeah, circumstances. It's basically different circumstances okay. based on injuries and, and and basically preparing yourself for yeah. the, the the national trials yeah but preparing yourself for the national trials and actually win at the national trials mm -hmm. not, not basically saying you're going to get a medal overseas definitely because the competition worldwide is is different yeah the levels of um professional and stuff that the other camps have overseas mm. i think it's it, them there. It's, it's 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 incredible but i actually think that jamaica worldwide but mostly mostly jamaica should actually um tone it down a little bit under the, the athletes that are not mentally strong yeah, yeah. The, and the support that bit. international athletes have I've, I, I lived in America for two years and I've seen how the U.S. support their athletes. I know athletes that are millionaires that are being supported, whether it's ear fear or, yeah. or <clears throat> probably even help with, with, with food and yeah. groceries. Yeah. And these people are millionaires. <laughs> but the thing is, these people have a system. You're doing well. We're going to support you. You're segueing into what I want to talk to, you know, all the corporate gentlemen Jamaica. about, you know, corporate Jamaica and sponsorship. <laughs> um, so we've all would have seen the tweet that, you know, Bolt had made. Um, but, you know, even before that, I know athletes would, you know, kind of come out and, you know, share their disappointments in sponsorship and stuff like that. The thing is, I don't think that a lot of Jamaicans know how hard it is on some athletes like yeah. some athletes work a regular nine to five just yeah, yeah, got training yeah. um do you think that our corporate companies can can sponsor or look out more for athletes i know that you are sponsored by grace kennedy. the grace kennedy um I, i'm not sure for anybody else well, like no no i i i basically never been sponsored you never been a, sponsored by a local by a local company. um corporate job were you approached by one before no um i'm sponsored by adidas though um, so I have to actually give thanks to Fadi that they looked out for me from I was at a tender age. Um, I'm a very humble person though. Um, I stayed in my little bit of circle and stay out of the media. Yeah, you're, you're very lucky to have. Me yeah, yeah. I'm, actually, I'm yeah. actually telling you, I don't actually come out. But my thing is this, right? Um, and I was speaking to your PR person um, earlier. And I was talking to somebody, you know, before coming onto the show, and the person was saying that, um, <laughs> the person was saying that, you know, athletes don't get the support that they should get because of performance. Um, is it because athletes are not approaching the companies or is it because the companies just don't believe in the athletes? What exactly? Where's the disconnect? Because clearly there's a disconnect here, Pro right? You said because of performance? Yeah, because, you know, they're saying, why, you know, say, you know, you have the Shelleys and the Elaine's and the, and the Bulls. All right, things. so you have across track and field, the 100 meter. Let me just use that as yeah. an example. How many Jamaican athletes do you think is ranked in the top 100 in the world? Mm. A lot. Mm. Uh, you think you can be a mediocre runner and do that? No, definitely uh, not. We know that. So, these people are going based on performance and saying that you know, they now win a medal. That is the performance they're going off. Mm. They simply don't, actually don't know what they have here. Simple. Is it, or they don't appreciate. Is it that? Well, I me, think no. I think they their knowledge of what they're speaking on is very little so they talk a lot of garbage so i just think that's just it because my thing is this i don't think that there should be an athlete representing the country on an international level 
whether it is Diamond League, whether it is the uh, World Games, whether it is the Olympic Games, and they're not being backed by local companies. You know, local companies have millions of dollars can sponsor well, any anybody that possibly wants sponsorship. Well, for me now, it's it's basically um, the corporate um, companies. They actually don't know what it takes um, to be a professional athlete. But they just don't care. Which I'm, one is it? No, I'm not going to say they don't care. I'm just saying there's a lot of things um, behind the, the closed door that's yeah. behind the scene. It, uh, athletes, actually, medical bill is probably close to probably two million a year. Uh, I'm and not even asking, that, or even more than that. I'm oh telling you. God. I'm telling mm -hmm. them. Um, you. It, 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 it is serious. Yeah. yeah ask him how much visit Dr. Mula. Yo, it, it's very serious. <laughs> and you know, know, that know. <laughs> no, no, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mula. Mula. Yeah, it, it, it's a lot. <laughs> um so to actually train, right? Because I don't really know the semantics, I don't know the dynamics, I don't know the details. So to train, it costs you to go to training? Yes, most definitely. Um I mean to be a professional yeah. athlete, you have to pay a coach. So you have to pay the coach? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Expense enough, trust me. So it you is. pay the coach. Um, is it a monthly fee? Is it? it depends on the agreement. It, it de depends on the agreement. It depends like on the agreement. Per year, you pay per month. So you have to pay the coach, you have medical bills. Um, when you're flying out, who will take care of those expenses? Like if you're going to represent the country, like say an Olympic Games. No, if you if you don't have a sponsor, you're sorry. <laughs> an Olympic <laughs> Games doesn't pay. Yeah, but then we are talking about the travel for the game, like no, somebody no, could no, buy no, a no, little ticket. No, they, they do. So you don't have to pay out of the pocket? Yeah, that's that's at the Olympic game, Olympic games, they different. pay, and it and then no, you're like if you're go, if you're traveling no, like, for a, 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 a you're national competition, yeah, yeah, no, yeah they, they pay. pay for that. Who the the country? The country pays for that. Okay, so well, if you're J3, going to like a J J three, it's like a diamond league. Then um, that's a different story. <laughs> that's a different so story. So you guys just pay that out of your pocket. Yeah, and so if you go there, you make no money. Then you know you're sad. It depends because if you are doing well. They're going to pay for your cup. Yeah, but then you know, everybody are going to do well, yeah. though. You know but what I mean? No, if you're not do well, you have to Because then the there's an athlete that just ran in the Olympic Games and she she was in a final and she used to ride bicycle to go training. Make I give you a And she worked size. nine to five. And when we hear that, like, me nearly dropped down. Yeah. Um, bicycle. Well, a lot of the Europeans do that. Them, them still work on them ride bicycle go training. Yeah, but then to ride bicycle, Jamaica Most as a national athlete, athlete, you know, wade up on TV or run up and down. That let me just to training also. Yeah, but it's a Jamaican athlete I was talking about. Oh. She rides a bicycle, mm -hmm. um, miles. I, I'm just because I don't want to call the person's name, but she was in a final for our country and she rides a bicycle to go to training. You know what I mean? I said so, and then she works regular nine to five as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at it like you're representing the country. There are there's thousands of corporate companies here. Is it that because they don't have good representatives that it w is representing them thing. for go? Yeah. And that is another thing. That is the case? That's another thing. That, that well, most of the time, thing. like um, when I, I went to basically like Europe and those yeah. places, and I run a couple of races, um, when I finish for probably like a month or two, um, my hotel bill is probably like four four thousand dollar euro. Um, don't forget it from. And don't forget it from. <laughs> so most of these are basically in the red. When ah. <laughs> no, 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 where we forget it from? No, where we forget it hey, from? Serious work over there. I'm gonna give you a joke. So I won't tell you which year, but there is a year when I left Europe when I got my bill. <laughs> 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 my, 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 my European bill was nineteen thousand and seven hundred and I think sixty dollars. <laughs> They didn't know, so they never asked him back in, but I'm never on the money to be a fan of him. for fun, no, I mean, here's my thing, right? I think that these discussions been going on for far too long and we have too many corporate companies and you know at the end of the day even if these athletes don't have representation representation to go and try to get sponsorship um the olympic team the other day was a 60 person 66 small, it was a small yeah 60 60 something yeah 60 something um and but, but companies can deal with that though like me just feel like say you know no one come back home and then i go go like different diamond leagues and stuff i mean i feel like say it's supposed to go look on it for say well when you win or you know hoping that you make money from the diamond what if you got it and some, god forbid something happens you understand you have to go pay the hotel out to your pocket you have to go pay for the but sir i have it if i somebody <laughs> case we stop running for the country i mean i ask i tell you and, and these are yeah. well, i don't know it, it, it is very frustrating um I want to also go into training. I know that you guys train hard, right? If anybody, if I follow me, you know, I say, the little gym work for me, do with Patrice, I kill me at daytime. <laughs> much less, 
Mahal are... Yeah, yeah. Masaya yeah. video. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bush, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know what's going like this? <laughs> you, know, you know what's going like this, bro? <laughs> so, so I'm going to lose your <laughs> We're not talking about that, brother. We're not here to speak about that, right? <laughs> so we're here to talk about the training. Um, do you guys train like every day? Like five days out of the week, seven days out of the week? Every day. Sometimes every seven days. Six days out of the week. Yeah, six for me. Six Sometimes days out of the week. Six. And twice most times. Yeah. And most, I mean, Monday, most days we train twice. Twice per day. Yeah. yeah. So if I don't have a vehicle, I would have to either take the bus or take the taxi. Listen, the mm-hmm. listen. When I was in, at the one in big, I, I actually felt good. To actually walk around yeah. because the, the, the mere fact that I came home and I have to buy ten grand gas to put in my car, yeah. <laughs> come yeah. to Kingston, yeah. and and the gas is done. Yeah. So most of the time, like you know, when I was small, I may have like a ten thousand and I'm packing. I say, all right, then this can serve me for like two weeks. Can you imagine? Ten thousand dollars can't do nothing. Right, 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 yeah. So for the persons that have like regular jobs, they would have to balance the regular jobs and yeah, train. And, train and a lot of them have to miss like some of the sessions most time. Mm-hmm. And then and then when you have to think about it, the person who have a regular job have to make sure they reach here early enough so they can train to go home and get ready for work. And then they have to come back in the evening after work when most people may be tired and just want to go in to sleep. Have to come back in the evening, train leave whatever time go home get ready for training and work the next morning again and to, to be honest if if you if you want to be a professional athlete you can't have a regular night well I, I don't have a life that not that track and field because track and field is already a nine to five yeah and if you want the best out of track and field and you have a nine to five don't make any sense because if you're up all day <laughs> we, we have to try to get some sleep another day yeah you know yeah. what i mean if you come back for your second session mm. If you don't work, you can't do that. You can't even rest your body, you can't recover right? you from the work, training. You, you're not hydrate enough, yeah. you're not eat enough. It's just not possible. So, one training session lasts like how long? Depends on the program. Uh, it could last two hours. Two to three hours. Two hours? Two to three hours a bit. Yeah, two to three. Like, on average, two to three hours. Yeah, if you do extra activity after. Hold on, hold on. People, I can't even train for half an hour. But not, <laughs> not. This is the one. I, you know, it, it just goes back and to one session. Right, then wow. The so part. then you're just warming up is an hour yeah. for me. And then the gym apart, and maybe just probably over an hour. Yeah. yeah. So warming up is that hour. The, the workout lasts for about 40 minutes, 45. And then after you cool down, then you have gym after probably strength exercise. Probably you run up to about play three. Magic play magic, they run to like three hours, like yeah. tops or. I, I don't know. Um. I think that you know, or 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 government. I, I really don't know who needs to step in. I, I really don't know. You know, especially athletes that are representing our country on a national level. Um, I think that you know, you guys need to be sorted out more. You know, even just little cases of water, the cases of Lucas Z. Like, even if it's not monetary things, um, yeah. you know, a couple of cases of water can go far away. Yeah. You know, a couple of cases of Lucas Z can also go far away. Like, say, okay, hey, here we go on. We'll pay for your health insurance. So, something, something, something of um, I, I don't know. Do you guys like have an association? Like, who represent the athletes? Like, the J Fears. Yes. All right, we're not gonna talk about that. Don't come soon. Yes. <laughs> 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 I got touch that. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I don't I'm know. gonna be ungrateful to be yeah. honest. Um, the, but I mean, you have an international sponsor. Yeah, yeah. no, but um, the J Three uh, sometimes um providing a little bit of slipings now and then. Um, over the years, it's not a lot, but I'm I'm grateful for it now and then. But it stopped. Yeah, right and, now. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Man, what's it? I read you here. My man, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man. So a lot of athletes, um, health insurance, yeah, health insurance, yeah. So a lot of us do have health insurance now. That's provided by the J Tree. J Tree, yeah. okay. So they, yeah, they they do send that helping on. Um, when a lot of you guys get injured and you goes to Germany, why Germany? Because I know, yeah. A lot of times in here, so no go for treatments in Germany. Is it that Germany has the best therapist? I have never been. No, yeah, you've I've never been, been to Germany. Just, never been. Just, All right, Mr. Parchment, yeah, man. My because you know, pool of German and them something, yeah, man. 
My what body is body. in the pool in Germany? Like, why not a little German in water? No, they have the healing water. They have the healing water in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, so what is next for the season? I know some persons want to call in, so we're going to open a phone line soon. But I just want to know, like, what is next? I know that you guys have a couple of diamond leagues left. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you're leaving the island soon again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and we have World Championship next year yeah. in Eugene. Yep. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to Definitely. that. We have, we have two games back to back, two World Championship back to back, I think. Eugene, Budapest. Yeah. Okay. And then Paris. Yeah, there's a lot of games coming up. So this is Noah. August, um, this season is a late season, clearly. Uh, when this season yeah, is actually coming know. to an end. It's actually it's a little earlier season. than, than early? usual. Yeah. It's when it's coming Normally, to an end though. I'm like September? September, yeah. September. September the 8th. September 8th. And then when you start back training now for World Champs next year. Two weeks after September, three Most weeks after September. Two, three weeks. So you just get three weeks of work. Yeah. 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 Sometimes less than that. Yeah. And that three weeks, you probably have to do some yeah, active start, rest. Yeah, you start jogging. I don't know. I don't think I could do this. Father God, I thank you for my talent that I'm working on the radio and them something. Because you know I could do them something. I'm not They work on something. Yeah. It's, all right. I want to talk to... I want to talk about dieting, right? But come and know, say, <laughs> when I can barely drink alcohol, when I can barely eat certain food, um, when I eat healthy and them something there. Like, what is the day of an athlete? Like, when they get up in the morning, five o'clock, when they got training? Well, I'm not going to discuss my diet over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I discuss my diet, probably my coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sorry>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get into that. Yeah. But the thing is, I, I, what I would definitely say, I definitely have to eat to feed my body. Yeah. So I can't just eat anything. I'm not you're not you're not never see me I eat some biscuit or them something there. Unless I probably just want <laughs> some to biscuit. But, um, I don't know. You, see, you have to you have to eat things where we actually nurture your body. Things up are high in protein and certain level of carbs and them stuff there where your body need for basically recover for the next day. Yeah. True. Yeah. True. Well but actually the I'm, things that well, we ahead, eat forget it. Uh it's uh uh as Rashid said, I won't discuss <laughs> well, my diet. For 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 me now, um yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit of a cheater when it comes to my um my, my diet. Um Well I mean it'll work out two times a day, so right now if me I work out two times a day, I can't eat any fast food that you want to eat. Sometimes because... I have like a a, a a bag of banana chips in me, something I'd have. And, and, and that on a cheat? Go, I'm gonna send Mary um <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot on a cheap meal? Yeah. Banana chips? Oh no. <laughs> you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to eat banana chips? No, you're not supposed to eat a lot of those stuff. So you're not supposed to eat snacks? Me not nah, eat banana chips. <laughs> everybody have them snacks. Yeah, everybody have like, them. They like cookies. <laughs> yes, yeah. 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 So you eat something like yes, it, yes, the sunshine chicken. snacks with one minute post. Them, them type of snacks. Yeah. They are snacks, you know, the granola bar and then they like the raisin and them stuff. But your granola bar is nice. You think they're nice? Yeah. So I eat fast food like burger, fried chicken. Personally, mm -hmm. I don't like fast food. Okay. You know what I mean? Prefer yeah, man. Running by the burger. Proper. Well, and the and zinger. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. So I know that everybody on Twitter, especially the women. Oh, Ansel. So I'm going to talk to you about yeah, something yeah. now before we Whoa. even open the lines, right? So um, I'm not sure if you use Twitter very often. I'm not sure how, how savvy you are on that app. But you know... Um, so you posted a picture on Twitter the other day, mm -hmm. like you're at work or like you're on the track. Yeah. And I'm not sure if you saw your notifications. Did you see them? Uh, <laughs> saw a few things. You, you <laughs> 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 Brother, the woman them in your mentions was going crazy. No. So when I said that you guys were coming on the show, right? Well, I know that you, you're not single in your talk. No. Mr. Tracy is not single. Far from. So the woman want to know, I'm not going to call and ask to see me, but I yeah. So they want to know if either of you guys are single. That, that is the first thing. Rashid first and then Mr. Okay, Parchment. The, the Parchment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ansel. The single or you're not single? May I keep that on a rough seat? All right. Um, so are you dating? May I keep that on a rough seat? Are you looking to date? Uh, may, may I go and focus on them and get first? <laughs> good answer, good answer, good answer. <laughs> I do I. You know what I mean? Are you single? Dating? Well, it's actually the same. Answer, answer <laughs> because the woman... Right, what right. he said. <laughs> hey, what going on? So all the women that were in my mentions, literally, this show been trending from 6 o'clock and the show started at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Because the woman, them in my mentions, and I used the hashtag. So when you can find the time later, you can just go skip to the hashtag and you will see some of the 
tweets them it's crazy um so for the women who actually wanted to say something or you know anybody that wants to call in and you know you know send congratulations to or athletes who did tremendously well um, and we're proud of them or you know anything that you want to ask this is a once in a lifetime opportunity as the air mr doya said them doing the interviews by the way um i've never seen you done an interview before never. rashid i think you've done one or a few like yeah, yeah. you may not really see the interview well, either tv is on, on those place but yeah I've never sit down i'm gonna post like interviews this. yeah that is it if you go google him i'm gonna say about post yeah. interviews and that is it really and truly so you know it's a once in a lifetime thing and they're fresh off the olympics f- fresh out of tokyo and all these things so you know if you want to call in send your congratulations if you want to ask any personal questions to all the ladies you know they're here so the phone lines are 876-212-9824 or 876-294-0275 once again that is 876-212-9824 or 876-294-0275 we have the olympians uh taekwondo tracy rashid dwyer and mr hans apartment and we're all expecting your calls miss una to even both to the nervous all of a sudden the nervous <laughs> what may i tell you this one for a drink look water because i'm thirsty upon the people on the internet <laughs> man i love that <laughs> i hope karim is prepared to abruptly end calls because it's not normal wow all right so um we are almost at the 10 o'clock break though um just let us know where we can follow you in the meantime as well just in case we get bombarded by calls what are your social media handles parchment underscore handle i think it is on on all Instagram. platforms on yeah, Instagram. Yeah. Uh, all the Twitter one go. Get a call already. The motherfucker wait till the Twitter. Easy for fun, man. All right, so it's hands apartment on Twitter, and I think it's parchment underscore Hansel on Instagram. Instagram. And for you, Mister Tracy. Taekwondo Tracy. Taekwondo Tracy. Taekwondo. Taekwondo. One thing ever correct people by yeah. name, you know. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> no, please, please. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Sir Yeah, it's just Rashid Dwyer. All right, Rashid Dwyer. All mm-hmm. right, so we're going to go on our 10 o'clock break. I said that we're starting to get some calls. We're going to go on our 10 o'clock break and then come by. I'm telling you, please, and I'm about to come for the people that read it with the foolishness. Yeah? So this is Boy Things After Dark right here on Newstalk 93FM. Welcome back to Boy Things After Dark right here on Newstalk 93FM. My name is Karim Boy Things. We're here with the Olympians. And, you know, this is the final. Oh, I said we're actually trending three times or three separate uh, training topics on Twitter. So big up on yourself still, you understand? Uh, we have a call on the line. Uh, thank you so much for calling, boy, at Things After Dark. We're here with Mr. Tracy, Mr. Dwyer, and Mr. Parchment. Um, what's your name and where are you calling from? Oh, hi. I am Megan, and I'm calling from Kingston. I'm really excited. This is my first time calling in on the radio show and actually got through. Okay. So yes. I guess my reaction time is really fast. Yeah, man. Welcome, well, welcome. I just really want to say, big up to all the athletes. I really had to tune into this interview because I really wanted some of the questions asked to be asked because it really sheds light on the internal of what goes on in the track world that Definitely. doesn't necessarily is seen until they're on the bigger stage and you know all the criticisms and they don't necessarily know what it entails to get to that level. So thumbs up to the questions they asked they were integral they were informative and i really like the feedback from the athletes yeah, man, you're welcome. and of course i want to say congrats to the athletes who made it to the finals semi-finals or just get into the games on a whole but i have to give a special big up to hunter parchment <laughs> because they yourself differently respect and respect. um i like your response to certain questions it's like the <laughs> ending of your race in the hurdle finals so yeah go and do the thing and i really enjoy this um session and thank you so much for the questions you asked thank you for interviewing not just the winner but also the other persons that were at the game and i like this unbiased interview and i hope going forward this can actually be the momentum for including all the athletes for doing the wonderful things that they've been doing Thank you for having me and enjoy the rest of your night. No, man, thank you so much for calling. And I hope that you're actually following all the athletes on social media. And, you know, thank you for the kind words. Yes, definitely. Uh, Pick up yourself, too. You're yeah. doing about the things that you said. Yeah, man, yeah, man, no problem. Thank you. Have yourself a good night. Take care. Bye. All right. <laughs> A1 will say, yo. Anyways, guys, the contact numbers once again are 876 212 9824 or 876 294 0275. We're here with the Olympians um, from this year Tokyo Olympic Games. And um, so, <laughs> you know what? 
a right, my lord, I could stand alone in a <laughs> Yeah, my lord, I could stand alone, man. Because, but Kia, somebody says she's so nervous. Of course, she must so nervous. You know, so then post by the picture again. <laughs> And see, I would just delete the picture off your page, yeah, brother. Please, yeah, I would just delete the picture and call it a day because there's no. But I'm staying with them for yeah, because, because there's no way. Um, also, guys, if you want to um to send in your questions through WhatsApp, you can also do that. Um, we can read the WhatsApp messages as well. Um, yeah, definitely. So Diamond League next, and then that is it, and then the rest for a small period of time for a small period of time yeah. um i said that you guys were offered some stays at the um sandals resort are you going to use that up mr tracy uh yeah <laughs> 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 yes yes good answer good answer <laughs> Oh my God, the All right, thank you so much for calling Boy Things After Dark. My name is Kareem. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, Kareem. This is Emma calling from Spanish Town. All right, Emma from Spanish Town. How are you doing? Stop pretending like you don't know me, but I am from Spanish Town. Remember, Hello. so we have nice, decent guests in the studio. You know, some of them make it here. Yeah, you understand? Look here. Look here, answer parchment, carpet DM. You don't need to be a decent round, Kareem. Mr. Dwayne, Mr. Tracy, good night. Good night, good night, good night. <laughs> yes, yes, young men. You guys are so bright. Respect I'm for so that. proud of you guys. Really appreciate like, it. For real. And the experience was lovely. I mean, you guys went to Tokyo. I've always wanted to go to Japan. So I'm really happy you guys went out and you competed. And I'm glad that you guys came in the studio. You were very much honest. And I believe that you don't have to meddle. Just you guys are brave enough to go and compete for the country. And then hearing about how athletics actually works or, you know, the fact that you guys don't have sponsors and all of that. Me couldn't do that. Never do it. Me never do it. Okay. I no couldn't. Me never no, do it. No, I'm all about my bag. So, like... Me not do nothing for free, my love. So that means I don't really love this country. I love the sport. I love the sport. Yeah. Yeah, and y'all love the sport too. So I'm so proud of you guys. That's all I call to say. I'm not going to ask anything out of pocket. Yeah, that's that. Understand? So big up on yourself, same way, and I wish you guys all the best. Yeah, man. Big up yeah, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Yo, when we hear in my voice, I'm going to get nervous you know, because I say, yo, Jesus Christ. Because Emma is so unpredictable that like, I just feel like she's not going to ask something lewd. <laughs> oh, Jesus, man. Save by the bill. I don't ask. No. Yeah, man, I think um, she went to the same high school as you did, I'm on. I'm on the mark of the school. I'm on the I never said nothing, I never said nothing. But I, I did not say anything that the man said if school is one of the best and if school is one of the best, he did not say school is the best. He says one of and this is okay. If him said the school is the best then we don't have a problem. Listen, listen, there's no pressure around here, you understand? Okay. Yeah man at the best school at a Jamaica man. Excuse yeah. me? Yeah man, b- believe me. Every male in a Jamaica wanted to go to Jamaica College. That's a lie. One point or something, that, yeah, man, that, believe. That Especially is, if you do trucks, <laughs> you wanted to do something. That, I got offered. Read it before you read I'm it. I'm Mr. Yeah. Agave. So, all right, I'm not going to read this question that was just sent into WhatsApp. I'm going to just pass the phone to the gentleman, so, and then he can, um, you know, he can answer if it is that he chooses yes. to. Because then now go. You know, it's not very old to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's uh, back in the chair. <laughs> 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 I have to do some investigation. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah but just look on the first three digit man and just see if you know the number. Because I don't know what kind of, what kind of, what kind of, something like that. But I love this. Now, guys, once again, the contact numbers are 876-212-9824 or 876-294-0275. Question. Uh, so we have a question this is Javon from Arcane Weather um, sending in a question for the athletes uh, how does the weather affect training and performance for you from positive and negative wind wet track uh, extreme cold or extreme heat good question by the way um, I guess there's always a ideal temperature yeah 
you know once it's between a certain degree then we're we're good mm -hmm. um, let's say for argument's sake between um 33 and um yeah about 17 yeah. degrees 17 might be a little bit chilly still but let's put that it, 19 it's workable yeah. But yeah 17 would be workable but between i think between that kind of temperature mm -hmm. we can put out exceptional um no, uh, performances okay. love that uh, so somebody else asks i just said this question is is mostly for rashid and hansel uh, so athletes normally retire in their 30s given that you both are over 30 what drives you to continue given the fact that you're at the standard in like quote standard yeah um yeah i mean chagan field you know 30 is kind of like the benchmark normally but i know a lot of athletes peak in their 30s yeah, most wait, 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 wait. Yeah. the benchmark why? why i don't know why i really don't know why and like people just always feel like you once you reach 30 oh, a retirement yeah. in a truck mm. and that is well yeah i mean a, a lot of athletes go way over 30. yeah like majority of senior athletes go but for me like 36. Mm. yeah michael johnson but they were really cut at about 36. Mm. yeah that brother there yeah <laughs> Um, Alison Felix is about 35 right now. Yeah, no. Shelly and Fred. Yeah, she's about she 35. 35 or yeah. 30, I think she was older. But no, I mean, she's not. Yeah. She's about 35. I think Shelly is about 34. 34. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. there's a lot of athletes out there that um, are at the age and still performing well. Mm -hmm. um, the Chiranda Martinez, you have the, the, the Tyson Gay, the Gatlin, they're still um, pro performing up to par, same way. Mm -hmm. So Gatlin is over 40, right? Um, I'm not even sure, but <laughs> <laughs> but he's up there. Yeah, he, he's up there, and well, there's a Kim Collins. Yeah, and Kim well, Collins. You know what I mean? He, so he was um, age is just a number. Um, yeah. But for track and field, when you're in that type of um range, you have to be nourishing your body very, very carefully and take care of yourself. Um, I get, I get a lot of rest. Um, a lot of recovery, yeah, vitamins, banana and stuff chips. Like. <laughs> banana <laughs> chips. Well, I feel like a kid. That's why I'm still eating banana yeah. chips. <laughs> so, do you think that um retirement is anytime soon for both of you guys? I know that you're about twenty. 28 yeah right i think um, we'll have enough time in front of them exactly well i know um parts went by 1990 and you by 1989 yeah, yeah. right so how <laughs> retirement to look I, well, I still have time okay my coach time. never want to bring up this question I, yeah. I, I, I talk about this he always saying about all right so how much again do i have I'm say 32 coach. <laughs> say about one, three, four years. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Whatever, <laughs> All right, my call on the line. All right. Uh, thank you for calling, boy. Things After Dark. My name is Kareem. I'm here with Mr. Dwyer, Mr. Tracy, and Mr. Parchment. You're here on New Stock 93 FM. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, good night. How are you? Uh, my name is Tony. I'm calling from Portmore. Hi, Tony. from Portmore. Um, I just want to say um, congratulations to the guys for competing in this Olympics. You know, we are proud of you. All of you, I know some of them very ungrateful and going the most, but just know say a lot of us are proud of you guys. And you guys did very, very, very good. Very, 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 very good. I appreciate it. Hello, some girl want to bring some water. Come on, the training zone. So tell the ladies they want to bring the water. <laughs> 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 wow. Well, I mean, if you want to bring the water, let me know. Can I bring the water? See, let me know. Yes. This is the kind of support we are talking Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You see? <laughs> Yeah, yeah man, we're carrying some cases of water. Of course, they will take it. No problem. Yes, so that's all I want to say, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> bless up yourself. I'll make sure right, you can bring you the water. Much. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, boy, I'm not lie. Um, so for the persons who are tweeting me and saying that I should ask the questions, I'm not going to do that because there are too many tweets and I can't read all of them. So if you prefer to just WhatsApp me number or call, then um, that can happen. But there are literally hundreds of tweets in my mentions, and I'm yeah, I'm not gonna read them. Um, I think the person that WhatsApp the <laughs> the WhatsApp with the question, I think um, she mentioned me. So I don't know if you know this person. I don't think I know this person. Am I calling online? Alright, thank you so much for calling Boy Things After Dark. My name is Kareem. We're here with Mr. Tracy, Mr. Dwyer, and Mr. Parchment. You're calling to Boy Things After Dark. What's the name of where we're calling from? 
Hi, good night. You're speaking to Anisha from Kingston, Jamaica. Hi, Anisha from Kingston, Jamaica. How are you? Good night, Kareem. Is that me you want to talk to? All right, sorry. Somebody else can answer our call, please. But come and understand. Who do you want to talk to, ma'am? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing wonderful. Good night, Mr. Tracy. Good night, Mr. Dyer. Good night, Mr. Parchment. Good, 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 good night, good night. So nice, you know, so nice. Not buying all these things. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Welcome to Things Nation Radio. Yes, you guys yes. enjoying the night? Yeah, so far, yeah, so, so far, so far, so far. Um, it's a different experience. Right. So I'm very happy. Yeah, man, make up on yourself, man. Yeah, yeah man. welcome. I saw a stay. We we'll welcome everybody. I just want to say congratulations to you guys for taking our nation on the map. And we really appreciate you guys. And we hope to see you guys do well for the next couple more years. Actual, sounds, sounds good. good. Yeah. Sounds good. I'm going to listen to what I talk to you here, Karim. Remember because, you know, I have to be myself girl in a competition you know yeah. right right remember your brand and yeah. stuff like that you can't publicly say anything which, which competition yeah. Yeah. Miss um miss like universe to jamaica oh, east or think, something like that i think got a parchment competition <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, Tracy? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The man's in a parchment competition. Yo. <laughs> okay, that sounds for the info. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Uh, big up yourself, Nisha. And, you know, best of wishes to you. And, you know, thank you so much for calling as per usual. Yeah, and I do welcome. appreciate you. Yeah, man. Do have yourself a wonderful night. <laughs> in a parchment competition. Jaja. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, can I read it all out? Yes, okay. Um, so to Rashid, well, this is the same person that asked the question earlier still, but uh, to Rashid, she's now asking, what is one important lesson that you've learned from your time as a professional athlete? Well, it's always um, being humble, and, and I always said to, um, to other um, peers that um, you're above no man. Um, so I treat I treat um, everybody on, on one level treat, treat everybody equally. So that's basically it. Being humble and, and, and staying grounded. I love that. Um, and the next question is: How does one become an athlete? What's the process, and who do we speak to specifically for someone interested in javelin? Um, so this person is interested in doing javelin, and you know they want to take it to the next level. So they're asking, how can they do so? Well, if they they can come to the track, you will track. Um, mm-hmm. Well, not not now. Um, probably about. I think they're probably going to start September. back September. Yeah, late September. And can come and talk to Coach Julian Robinson. Mm-hmm. He's a throws coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's very adept in in all the throws. Yeah, technique. yeah, most definitely. So you would be the best person to come and see. Or they can, them can pass through the, the the university sports department, and them can direct them. Okay, so um, so, so for the persons who are asking about you know to turn a professional athlete, you don't know what direction to go. You hear? You can just come up to the UA, and you know go to the sports. I department. come over GC Foster College. I, I yeah. go over GC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I go over GC Foster College, yeah. and you, know, you can just talk to a coach, and I guess they can try out our. I don't know. I don't know something that work. <laughs> but then if you could just go on audition and say, sir, you know, I can't throw a javelin and the man just say, I throw the javelin and make me see like, I don't know, but you may get us going to talk to a coach. Um, so this is question number one. How do you handle a wet track? And question number two, um, if you could create a policy to benefit athletes, what would you include in such? So I'm going to ask the first question first. Um, how do you handle a wet track? All right. Wet track. Hmm. Well, it don't really that different from a dry track. Really? To be honest. Um, the wet track can be good. It can make for a faster performance. Mm-hmm. But you know, you have to be careful that your heel isn't touching the track when it's wet. Yeah. Because that can be dangerous. That can cause injuries. So you but need to make sure that every time you strike down, it's yeah. on the front of the spikes. Well, it's it's, it's very technical for for parchment. Um, mm-hmm. I, I actually know that because a lot of stuff is going to be affecting um, my earth. I, I definitely don't no, buy, buy 
by experiencing uh, and, and seeing other people coach the herder. If the wind is blowing in their face, it's going to affect them. Mm-hmm. If the wind is blowing in their back, they're going to approach the herder a little bit faster. So definitely there's a lot of stuff um, to do with parchment event other than the 100 meter, the 200 meter, you're just basically running. But parchment is different. It's a lot yeah, of man, it's very technical. Yeah. 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 Very technical. And for the next yeah. question that this person asks, um, anybody can answer. Uh, if you could create a policy to benefit athletes, what would it include? And what would it include in such? So what policy would you try to create to benefit athletes? Like, is it the health benefits? Is it... What exactly would you want to say in the future? <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like health benefit would be the most important one yeah. because that would have give us the chance now to go out and make money yeah and once you're healthy you can perform well definitely you know what i mean once you're putting out the work so i feel like that would have been one of the most important ones i mean one thing i've also seen i mean they, i believe that there should be some kind of policy in place to help people across the board mm-hmm. but one incentive i see like a country like canada does like once you are performing to a certain level you will be sponsored by the country yeah is is either in terms of helping with playing fairs or living arrangements or something some, something of the sort but these countries put things in place mm-hmm. incentives to make sure the athletes want to work towards being on top definitely and these these things also help in terms of you know like the health benefits especially yeah. like a man get injured and he might think about the amount of money we're buying mm. cost him the surgery and this and that and he might be say you know what I'm take the longer way to deal with it mm. or he might feel something in his foot and it may be serious and he don't know and he might say yo he not have the money to check it he might just chance it Some and answer all question, something though. there like I'm glad you did touch that point and I know that we've said that you know medical expenses are really like expensive so I'm an athlete now right I'm going to get uh, an injury. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> hypothetically speaking. Oh, hypothetically I mean, speaking. Never said that, All right. All right so hypothetically go. speaking though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So me as an athlete, I'm going to have the money um, to nurse an injury. So like, what do I do? Like it's just there? The- you have basically, self massage, man. Basically, you have to massage your own fine. You have to massage gun. Yo, that is crazy. Yo, I don't know who needs to start looking into things like this. Like, yeah, man, like medical expenses are or should be number one priority other than hotel room and them stuff. But yeah, <laughs> um, somebody wants to ask a question of our caller. All right, good. Uh, thank you so much for calling, boy. At Things After Dark. My name is Kareem. What's your name and where you're calling from? Hello, good night. My name is Davia, and I'm calling uh, calling from all the way in St. Anne. Hi, Davia from St. Anne. How are you doing? I'm not bad. You know, I really looked forward to this interview. I set my alarm. I was so tired this evening, but I had to set my alarm to wake up and listen. And I just want to tell the gentlemen, thank you. Because, you know, after listening to you guys and realizing that you don't have as much sponsors and support from corporate Jamaica. You know, I found this newfound appreciation for you guys. And I just want to tell you, thank you. And thank you for being brutally honest, but respectful. You know, somebody might do something and this would be your perfect platform to perhaps, you know, say what you really want to say and make them feel bad. But you guys were respectful and I appreciate the honesty. And I hope that corporate Jamaica come on board and support these gentlemen because they evidently love them country and they love what they do and I also want to big them up respect man no yeah, man. Not really that, appreciate man. that yeah man so that's really definitely fun. definitely um thank <laughs> you so much for calling though i do appreciate it all they said that you were tired you have to set your alarm you know yeah. thank you for listening it was definitely an insightful interview like man yeah, i know I'm, that we all learned something from this and kareem i just want to thank you as well Thank you for using your platform for doing things like these. You know, your radio show is very diverse. You know, you're not limited. You're not put in a box. You don't do just certain topics. You try to be diverse and shed light on certain things. And I just want to thank you as well. 
Mais dem know no man, yeah man. Uh, you know, thank you. <laughs> no yeah, jokes, man. yeah. But you know, thank you so much though. Um, you know, thank you for the words of encouragement and your kind words, and I do appreciate it. I I don't take it for granted any at all. And, you know, and thank you for all to all of my listeners. Man, I ask like on a day or every single week, and I must say that I'm very appreciative of it. You know, have yourself a wonderful night, and you know, a safe week. You know, thank you so much though. All right. Yeah, right. man. Thank you. What a nice lady from St. Anna, I love that. Yes, man. Yeah. yeah it's some proper sleep, yeah, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't it. Yeah, man, yeah, it's some proper sleep, man. <laughs> there was a question, Martin, that you had showed me. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember the question. Oh, so they were asking, um, she said, please ask Hansel or the other gentleman if Ronald Levy is single because I'm planning a wedding. No, 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 no. See? No. The man is married. No. So you can go drink your water and go your bed. Through the window. <laughs> yeah, the man is married. 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 See? Love that. Oh. Yeah. Second Alright, so two questions. Second one. Oh, okay. Um Okay, so did the change in the time zone good question by the way, uh Coco Butter. Did the change in the time zone affect your sleep pattern and training routine? Always. Yeah, yeah. It does. Yeah. Always. Miss sleep anytime. <laughs> Except Tracy, yeah, Tracy sleep anytime, <laughs> anytime. <laughs> Tracy and was my roommate, yeah. right? And yeah, every time I come back to the room, he must take sleep. time to open the door because <laughs> this man, the place dark and he knock out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she also is asking if it is that um, it took your body uh, some time to adjust. Um, how was that though? But I know jet lag is a real thing, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, because we've been doing it for, for a while a long now. Time. Yeah. Um, we we have a better idea how to tackle it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we try to, as we get to the the, 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 the destination, yeah. we try to start do some work, and try to hold out until night. Yeah, yeah, that's the, what the I did. Sleep, yeah. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. I, I have a caller, Martin. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for calling, boy. Things after dark. We're here with Mr. Dwyer, Mr. Tracy, and Mr. Parchment. You are on New Stock 93 FM. What's your name and where you're calling from? Hello. Hello. Yes. Go ahead. Hello. Yes. Hi. Good evening. Night. Night. This is Mary Poppins. Hi, Mary Poppins. How are you doing? I'm good. Night, gentlemen in, gentlemen in the studio. Night. Let me say this, Karim, I can skip over the question. I wanted you to ask a question this way. How do you handle a wet track? Um, actually, we're high for time, you know, sprint over a little bit and understand. Um, you know, I'm not shy away from the question a little bit. However, my third question is, um, in regards to the government of Jamaica assistance in regards to track and field and Ministry of Sports, do they assist in any way, shape or form in regards to funding? Well, they, they were trying to do something once. Um, there was one point in the pandemic we got a little change. Yeah. One um, month. Well, I think it was one month. But of course that's not enough. Um, mm-hmm. We would need a lot more than that to, to sustain what we're doing, especially, yeah. you know. So probably, probably what they could do is, is you know, se- select a few at least then. If it's a case mm-hmm. where there's not enough money for everybody. Across the board, of course. You know, select a set of people. So Across the a board. few from so this group, a few from this group. Yeah. Swimming. They, yeah. Football. Exactly. You know, tennis. That makes sense. Netball. Across the board, because, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Everybody are going to represent the country. Exactly. Just as a curiosity though, um, does track and field have a union? Because we, again, you guys are stakeholders. Yeah, sure. Is there a union? No. no I'm aware no, no. right now. I, I think we like, would love to create one though. You should create one. I think you should create one. You should create yeah. one because West Indies players have a union. Well, maybe you can uh, assist us with that. Come again? Maybe you can assist us with getting that go- um, started. That would be and lovely. So, um, there's a strong possibility, you don't remember me, work at sports department at UE. You can talk to Dalton about that. Oh, all right. We'll give, we'll, we'll forgive Dalton a thought then. Yeah, man. Yeah, you may need to because track, we've had track and field athletes who, well, not just track and field, where athletes represent Jamaica, don't have a home after, can't provide health care for themselves and even their children. So that is mm-hmm. something to be considered. You're going to be a brand for Jamaica. Yes. They're going to step out there on the stage. 
at least have a security because that when the push come to shop who you have a up on you need true. a union you're back <laughs> that is so <laughs> <laughs> well, Mary Poppins, we're going to go on um, the 10.30 break, though. You know, thank you so much for calling. And, you know, please to message Mr. Parchment as to the follow-up. So we can go to Mr. Dalton or whomever it is. So we can go farm um, the union. It's just done. You want to be of yourself and thank you. So we're going to go on at 10.30 break. This is Boy Things After Dark right here on News Talk 93 FM. Right, welcome back to Boy Things After Dark right here on News Talk 93 FM. And we're here with the Olympians, you know, that did tremendously well. And I must say once again, I'm, I'm really proud of you guys. And, you know, thank you for representing the country. Um, yeah, despite yeah, all that you guys are are going through and, you know, all that. Um, Cassie, can I read a question? Yes? No? I can read it? Just, yeah. Just yeah. Sorry, Tommy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. no problem. <laughs> All right. So this lady says, "Good, uh, congrats, guys. Firstly, um, to even make it to the Olympics is an achievement with, within itself. Cause I couldn't do what you guys do. So big up and you know, thank you once again. I'm extremely proud of how you all represented our beautiful country of Jamaica. Getting down to the meat of the matter. So she's asking if you guys wear a tight underwear um to to run because it's distracting the female viewers um y'all out there looking like a tall drink of chocolate milk <laughs> that's exactly what she says so so i don't know what answer the question there well i i definitely do <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah and that was Dwyer, by the way. That was Dwyer. Dwyer. Like I said, there's some other tweet there, but they're not making. Yeah, because the woman, them, that boy, <laughs> boy, I'm in that father God. This is what you see. The woman, them, they put on the earth, and this is what they're doing. Boy, I'm at you. So, yes, there goes the answers, people. Yes, they do wear underwears. Uh, so, not all of them. Not all of them. Not all of them. Well, see there? Well, well, well the gentleman here, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to catch the field. <laughs> so the gentleman here actually wear tight underwears. Yes. No, Rashid wear. Rashid does speak for himself. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think this is for Hansel. Um, can you show um, this question to Mr. Parchment, please? Show him. Yes. So she wants you to see that. So she, well, let me carry this over. She want to be a early in her life. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we cancel. Let the me just say continues. <laughs> the competition. <laughs> boy, boy, it's serious. Um, Hansel, oh. let me just say your video that you made when um with the young lady that offered you the ride or the money to actually, you know, let you can go to the semifinal race, that was a tearjerker. Um I must say that was very commendable because not people never got to do that and try find her back and all those things. Um, what made you post it or what made you, you know, even say, well, I'm going to give her a shirt and I'm going to go back and show her that I actually meddled. Um, I think that part for me was very, very emotional. Um, yeah. Kudos to you for doing that. But what made you do that though? Well, <clears throat> sorry. I was always going to go back because I was telling her, Hey, I'm going to take back the money to give to you because you know if you didn't help me i probably would have missed yeah. or i would have get there too late and not not enough time to warm up and thing but after i come back with the gold medal and you know reason with me the man in the, the room with me them say yeah man give her a link yeah take, but, take the thing for but remember you did actually say it from before you said when we win this gold medal now go back to her yeah yeah we did <laughs> but, say that yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, I, didn't, I, I didn't think about making a, you know, a video about it and thing, but we talked to them. But I'm glad you did. Yeah, man, definitely. I'm glad you made that video. Yeah. No jokes. Um, so this question is from Renzi. She says, I must say congratulations to all our athletes who performed in the recent, uh, recently concluded Tokyo Olympics. Uh, however, my question is to all, how do you balance track and field and family life with such a tight training schedule? And how was the current pandemic affecting your overall training experience? Well, right. well you want to go? Got you, got you. Well, for most of the pandemic, I was basically on lockdown. Yeah. So I didn't get to train as I wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, I actually trained um, 
and I was actually training on the road in my scheme. I, I was doing a little bit of acceleration, jogging in my scheme to keep my, my, myself active mm -hmm. and not to gain a lot of weight. Um, so I feel like I'm here to talk about it. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but it's a game Molly Powell and Kobe in the cab seat. You know, say Tracy, you know, you know, come on, come on, show. You know, you know, I need this one. Tracy being blunt. Yeah, man, but um, you know, trading on your personal life though. How do you balance it? Because to to train twice per day sometimes. I, I, and I definitely I, don't think I have a personal life to be honest. Yeah. Um, I train in the morning and after I train, I just went home and sleep yeah. and I went to training again. And then me after rest for the morning session again. Yeah. And weekend, I'm too tired for go out. Yeah. <laughs> so I, so I don't, don't really know. go out I and really like, go party. I feel like when we, when we were younger though and we, we were filled up energy yeah you know what i mean we could have do anything them time then. yeah but you, you know take I mean? longer with your <laughs> 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 you know what i mean and people would have gone and party same way yeah even after training mm. and come back the next day for training again mm. you know if, no no the thing is different now yeah, mm. the time sure. out and get if i rest. go out and and party and come training and tired me I make an excuse up to, to my coach and say you trained me too hard yesterday coach me <laughs> me not even recover yet <laughs> so, listen I can't even imagine it um so somebody says that i know for a fact that these men appreciate this interview I, I love the chemistry the opportunity to shed some light on the track world to talk about their struggles and interact with the things nation supporters we do thank you um let me tell you kareem you're going far in this industry but you know once again you know thank you so much because because, you know, oftentimes we don't really hear these things and we don't really know. Like, our city is when we just run up and down and we don't really know, you know, all the rigorous training and sacrifices that you guys, you know, make outside of the love for the sport is also a love for the country. You know, despite how the country treats, you know, each individual, you know, so commendable, 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 commendable. You know, thank you once again. We have a call of Davion. Yes. It's a personal call of Davion. <laughs> All right, good. All right, so we can just take this call so we can wrap up, please, and thank you. Ready? I uh, thank you so much for calling, boy. Things after dark. My name is Kareem. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Carla, are you hearing me? Yes, I am. Yeah, I Jesus am. Christ! Unfortunately, I am. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Hello? Yes. Are you hearing me, sir? Yeah, I'm hearing you. Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you clearly. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Alright, I'm, I'm not uh, quite sure. Japan, we represent the country so well. Um, So, that's really what I want to do tonight. I um, just want to big up my fraternity brother and the parchment especially. You do the whole Black Sea proud and the whole that we did there, Jamaica, root for you and a cheer for you. I mean, no, you know that already, but I still want to remind you, you know? Yeah, word, man. Big up the rules. Hey, one rules. <laughs> 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 the rules! <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, what kind of one? What kind of one? I'm to say it. I never actually really know, so I saw it difficult for athletes to get sponsorship, especially athletes that represent the country. Because I've seen athletes train before. I've seen you train before by the bowl. Um, I've seen you and Blake down there training. I've seen all sorts of uh, all assortment of athletes down there training. And the work we to put in, brother, me couldn't do it. And me will never try to do it. Mm. My, check and, my check and field career lasted an entire day. CMD <laughs> eight start. And CMD eight, eight done. And CMD eight stop. Whether after that day, I make up my mind that that thing is not for me. I will never do it. And at university, I go realize that we got sports day, and 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 tell them, say I go do I jump. I me first jump out of competition. <laughs> yeah. From right there, so I realize that I know my calling that. So I just load that alone, brother. So kudos to Uno. I'm no one of greater things in store and yet I can I know something I'm going to tell you know, but I say it to you me. you can't do it until you get you them on, on internet we have so much things to say 
at the end of the day, them are fans and them are going to talk the first thing that come out of their mouth. But them can't do what they do. Them know that, and they know that, and that's why their mouth flies so fast. That's the only thing fast about them, their mouth. <laughs> you get what I mean? Yeah. Adam Finger. Adam Finger. Trigger Finger. Yeah. yeah see, Twitter you see, Finger. You see Bushman in the studio video? He can't tell you how it goes when people try to run. Christ to God. Kimani, you never call, call for talk about no bush, you never call for talk about no nothing, you call for talk about the athlete. You know what funny? Me that one never, you are parchment in my talk. Bush man. Yeah. Oh God. But big up yourself for the Kimani, you know, always, always, always. And you're right, you know, they've done some sacrifices that the rules require. <laughs> They've done some sacrifices that three quarters of us, you know, would not have done, you know, regardless of, of you know, you, you wanting to represent your country or not. I know a lot of us would not have gone through with it. And, you know, these men has been doing this for years upon years, you know, throughout it all, throughout yeah, injuries. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I can't, I tell you, the, the only time I represent Jamaica, I will never watch some TV. <laughs> And then I'm going to ask him about something from TV. Other than that, maybe we have the flag for me. Yeah. <laughs> but me, I'm not competing. I'm not going to play. I'm not going to be the one that I cheer. And I make all of the nice. And maybe the one for go far in, but I'm going to say to Jamaica, I'm going to come from. Actual, factual. I'm not very nervous, but I'm not going to keep my ball. Well, I'm not going to keep my ball. Yeah, yeah. Big up yourself, though. Big up yourself. Um, I'm going to just read one more tweet. Um, so this lady says, fun and joke aside, aside... Well, massive respect to all gentlemen, well, to these gentlemen and to all athletes, um, to do what you do under public scrutiny and in less than ideal circumstances, independently. We can't say thanks enough. We can't do what we want to do. We want to keep the Jamaica flag high, and I must say thank you. Um, somebody says, Hi, Kareem. Can you ask the guys if some athletes have managers who are responsible for getting them sponsorships and if they want to become more common? Um... Do you guys have managers? Do you guys have a team um, to go out and try to get you sponsorships to go in the meetings and represent you? As of recently? Yeah. Uh, overseas for meets? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, locally, no. Well, recently, yes. Recently? Okay. Yes. Um, Parchment, door. Well, I'm still taking um, things into perspective right now mm -hmm. and see where I should go from here. People already um, come approach me mm -hmm. so i'm still taking things in perspective but i have um my manager accounting accountant and my dad that do everything for me yeah. um overseas i have my manager well my agent that book my races and stuff like that but yeah. that, nothing really locally um that is cemented right now okay and parchment yeah i have i have a management team mm -hmm. now uh, we're still a little not fully structured mm -hmm. but you know I, I i'm finally at the stage now where i understand what is what is necessary yeah and what is is needed to be done to mm -hmm. get things in order all right and um do you have anything that you want to say to jamaica how people can get to follow you um anybody you want to big up you know you can just do that from tracy go right down Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to say big up to every single human being who genuinely support us as athletes and not the <coughs> ones that wait wait until um, you know there is a certain light that is shining on us the ones that would, gen would genuinely look out and you know support us and give us all the praise and respect that some of us really don't get anywhere else mm -hmm. so um you know just really want to shout out to everybody who really support us yeah and how we can follow you on everything is taekwondo tracy okay and mr doa well on um, I'm, I'm just basically on instagram mm -hmm. um you can follow me at rashid dwyer mm -hmm. or dwyer underscore rashid mm -hmm. um to shout out anyone yeah. um i basically want to shout out my, my mom um mm -hmm. my 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 coach and all my my friends and, and basically family that always been supporting me yeah um and jamaica overall um they're actually um a lot of good people in jamaica um 
um, 90% of Jamaican are basically good to me. Um, the others are just um, <laughs> 10%. Yeah. Ten, there's a, that 10% yeah. that um, basically say that anything that comes to their mind, they actually said it. Um, but it doesn't really affect me that much um, because I know that um, Chuck and Peel is basically um, 70% mentally and, and the next 30% is on the track. So I do understand what people um, say out there. And mm -hmm. It doesn't really affect me that much because um, over the years, Chuck and Peel has really broke me. Um, um, numerous times that I'm so numb to certain um, stuff so mm. but most time when people said stuff about me it, it doesn't even matter to me I just stay in my little lane and be humble and, and be grateful for life overall yeah I love that and Pachi yeah I'm um, thankful to everybody that uh, was there on the journey to get me to where I, I am today you know I just want to take a little time to just mention you know the athletes on the team who perform them best um, you know just just remember the, the Rana Levy you know Shelly Sherika Candice Kimberly you know what I mean Aisha Pratt even though she mm -hmm. didn't get to compete yeah you know, she she had the team spirit she came and gave us our support same way you know big up the whole team if a big up the whole St. Thomas Massive <laughs> yeah man got to do that you know is that is that the roast the roast big up the roast <laughs> <laughs> seriously <laughs> yeah but yeah man huh? yeah. big up Coach Coleman big up O'Keel yeah you know what I mean big up O'Keel Stewart big up O'Keel Stewart all day every day shout out Coach Jason as well um Bruce, Bruce James, you know what I mean, he's, he's been uh, working behind the scenes. That's my manager. Yeah, he does. Really? Know, yeah, man. That's my manager. Oh, man. okay. I never know. He's doing a good job. Oh, Can't thank nice. him enough. Yeah, man, Bruce well. James, are, yeah, man. Yeah, good yeah. people. Definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, say, you know, say, Tracy. You know, say, I'm okay. Man, of mercy, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you do your part already, not here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh boy, Tracy, yeah, man. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, you know, once again, guys, you know, thank you so much for coming here and uh, um, collectively, and you know, sharing your stories individually. Um, you know, I must say, for those who even knew, you know, I, yeah, man, yeah, Martin, yeah. For those who even you know know of your stories and and the sacrifices, it still opens you know each and every Jamaican um, who are listening you know open our eyes and we must say thank you for years of sacrifices, years of hard work, drive determination, and you know all of that you've put into your craft and your talent and your career and this country. You know, thank you so much. Also, you know, thank you so much for being here and you know for sharing these stories. I I know that it might not be easy, but you know, Jamaican people they need to know. And um we do appreciate you. Um you know so thank you also to all my listeners right across the world thank you to my local um listeners right across the island of jamaica you know i i thank you always i said that we're still number one training them i know supposed to like maybe train to all tomorrow night <laughs> so you know you know thank you thank you thank you so much to our entire team martin davian and dj spooky 876 big up on yourself big up dj donovy big up dj kevin the kinetic big up dj mark you know big up on yourself cassie yes you're in the bill people only know so anytime i believe myself is because cassie is here <laughs> yeah so you <laughs> must know so yeah so anytime I just see Cassie in the building, yeah, we don't know some of my best behavior. Um, yeah, you know, thank you so much to Things Nation. Thank you to all my listeners. I do appreciate you always. And this episode will be posted on my YouTube at Friday at 7 p.m. So they can go listen. You know, curfew time. So after inside and house and, and I watch and all these things. So it will be on my YouTube channel Friday at seven o'clock for those who you know want to watch. Um, you know, big up on yourself, right? You always, always, you know, think this and big up on yourself. And you know, thank you so much for the support. Um, DJ Spooky, you can just go and play some music for the next five minutes. You understand? Yeah, man. So that's DJ Spooky eight seven six. Remember to go ahead and follow him. Oh, remember this episode came to Kimchi courtesy of Campari Grapefruit. That's easy for we. And I big up on yourself, Campari. Um, you know, thank you so much for. 
the support. And until next week, Tuesday, my name is Karim Boyer Things. Remember, you have a purpose. You'll be great. And, you know, just continue pushing, pushing through whatever it is that you're going through in life, all the adversities. Just continue pushing. You have a purpose, right? And there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm going to ask Christ. King Boyer Things himself. This is Boyer Things After Dark right here on Newstalk and 93FM.